Last time on Square Roots, we celebrate Mother's Day in jail, attend a poetry slam, and release the Kraken jokes. Hello and welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. I'm Matthew Van Zant, joined as always by John. I don't have a nickname for you, John. I don't. I don't do this normally. Brandon. How about John of Blades? John of Blades. How about John? John of Blades is really a dragon, Brandon. All right. Hello. And Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. Guys, why am I doing this host thing again? Uh, well, you know Jim's odor problem. Yes, I do recall Jim's odor problem. It turns Jim out... Jim Odorizzi, we started calling him. Right. We we thought that he had bathed and taken care of it, but it turns out he just febrezed himself really heavily. Oh and, my gosh. And uh, that stuff wears out. So Jim is in the shower as we speak. Uh, he might be done before we are finished podcasting, but I told him that he cannot come out until he scrubbed himself red raw, so we'll see what happens. And don't forget that Jim so. is also a littles, so he might get washed down the drain. Well, I put one of those hair guard things over the top, so I'm hoping that will help. Okay. So, Jim, if you heard that, come back smelling good or come back with no skin. Per Vanessa. Per Vanessa. He can have skin. Just <laughs> I want I want him to get rid of that old layer and start fresh. Yeah, with a fresh new coat of muscle. Do you want Jim to to molt? Yeah, I want him to molt. We want him to feel like he's molten lava. So once again, Vanessa's attraction to animals comes out. What do you Good mean God, once Vanessa. again? This has never come up before, and it's, it's not only true. Okay if it's a consenting adult. Dressed up as molten lava, Vanessa. Uh, Otherwise, you can't have sex with lava. No, it'll burn off your bits. (laughs) Your bits, Vanessa. Think of your bits. Oh, I always do. Two bits. All right. Well, this is the classic RPG podcast for nerds like you. Our friend Jim is in the shower, and uh, probably I'm supposed to talk about how this is like a book cub for games? A book cub. Yeah, I know what I, yes. The a cutest book nerdy bro- book cub. He's always at the library and he's got a cute little beard. Oh, so I'm not supposed to have sex with animals, but it's okay when John talks about cubs. I see how yeah. it works. What the fuck, John? That's a child. No, it's a consenting adult who's like a smaller bear. A consenting adult dressed as a child. John, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. This that is isn't real what I'm borderline. Talking about, although, you know, hey, I mean, that's. Uh, they're all grown ups. Doesn't matter if they're wearing diapers and have a. We're pushing it now. Is an otter a thing? Yeah, that's like a, a slim, hairy man, little animal that lives in the rivers and eats nuts that they break on their tum tums. So, if you're having sex with an otter, part of the sex play is they have a special rock that they keep under their <laughs> armpit <laughs> and then <laughs> let you play with. Did you know that some otters keep the same rock their whole lives? I think we've talked about it on the podcast, so yes. It's like their binky. Ah, it's so cute. I didn't know that, and it's really cute, but those things are mean. No, they're adorable. I've seen them up close. They're Mm -hmm. really cute. They're very sweet. Did you see them up close, like, with a sheet of thick glass between you and them because you were at some sort of zoo or aquarium? They were just in the river, but they are like three three meters away, which is like three yards. Happy Canada Day, John. Thank you. Welcome to Canada. Hey, before we get into our level up, I think I have a note here from Jim, and it says that I'm supposed to mention the Patreon. Guys, did you know we have a Patreon? Yeah. We do. It's we haven't great. plugged it much lately. I've, I've not been good at it. How do oh. I withdraw from the Patreon to buy Uncharted Lady Times? Yeah, so, uh, guys, it's probably about time that we, uh, level up. Vanessa. Yeah. How did you level up? I got traveling pants. Uh, (laughs) everyone knows the plot of the hit movie, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. 
It yes, was a also pair a book. Of pants travels the United States solving crime. It's about uh, four girls of different sizes, but they find a pair of pants that fit them all perfectly. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, apparently. I haven't actually seen it, but that's what I've heard. And so they send the pants to each other to wear? I don't know. Mm. A- anyway, a friend of mine was doing a closet purge, which is good news for me, because I got a lot of new clothes to wear. Uh, she brought over a whole bag, and I tried on a whole bunch of stuff, and another friend of ours was there, and this third friend is about maybe half the size that I am in dress sizes, and I tried on this black dress that my original friend had worn, and it was snug, but it fit me, and then I was like, I think that third small friend should try it on, and it fit her perfectly. How does this even happen? Magic. It was a magical miracle, and the sisterhood of the traveling pants is real, because all three of us have worn that dress now, and we are all three different sizes, and it looked fine on all of us. Quick question. Is a dress a pants, though? No. No. A dress sort of a fabric tube? No. Liars to go to time out now. What? Liars go. Okay. Aw, she's uh, still leveling up. Yeah, I'm still leveling up. Uh, I got you a whole bunch. You go to time out for one minute of every year old you are. Vanessa, how many minutes of time out is that? 20. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so, I got some great new clothes. Thanks Yay. to... My friend who's actually she had a uh, sort of mobile wardrobe thing that she'd set up and it collapsed under the weight of all the clothes she'd Ah! bought. So her loss is my gain. Now you'll never Uh, get to Narnia. Yeah. Well, you know, ladies be shopping. That's what girls do. All of the stereotypes you've had in your mind of how girls just get together and try on clothes. It's true. That's what happened. Also, we watched football and the guy had to kick the ball many times, and whoever kicked it into the hole the most won. It was like sudden death, and uh, the Russians were very happy because their guys kicked it the most. That was a travesty. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, John, how did you level up? There was a, there was a rat situation, because it was Canada Day yesterday. And so, of course, I was home uh, playing video games by myself. Don't forget that snitches get stitches, John. Yes, exactly. And to celebrate Canada Day, my my cat was like, meow, meow, I have a gift for you in my bedroom. And I looked down ah. at the floor, and she laid down a rat, which was just sitting there for a second, like, stunned. And I was like, oh, uh, actually, I do not want this gift. Can I return it? And then the rat was like, I'm going to go hide behind your desk. And then my cat was like, I'm going to run after the rat. And then I had to move furniture, and the rat got under my entertainment console. So I tried, like, I had to, to, to like, knock it out of the way. I, I got the, I was trying to move my Wii Fit board and my laptop, which were, like, totally squished up against the top. So it was, like, super tight, and I was pulling it out, and I just hear a, a loud squeak, and the rat perished. It was under the Wii Fit Aww. board, and I killed Aww. it. I was trying to, like, hum- like I got my gloves on and everything. I was trying to humanely just put it back outside, and it died. And I felt very, I feel very bad. Yeah. Was it a big, stinky, gross rat, or was it a cute little mousy wousy? A little buddy. I mean, it was like maybe a little buddy. Yeah, it was like three and a half, four inches long. With the tail as well, like not including the tail, it was small. It was like the size of a, a, a very large mouse. But it so was, was it a rat. Mouse or a rat. It was a rat, but it was about the size of a small mouse or a mm. large mouse. Well, did you cook it and eat it? No. Oh, those things have like I'm parasites and mites and things. I don't want it in that. It's a slap in the face to Jack. Porky was very upset that the that or Porky. The, the mouse Whatever. was not in the house and kept investigating it. Also, um, there was a steam sale. And uh, I don't have a lot of self-control when it comes to Steam sales, <laughs> now that I have a PC. So I got a few games. I got Alpha Protocol for $2, because we'll play that in like a year and a half. And uh, we got I got um, Valkyria Chronicles for the PC, and I got The Witcher 3, the Game of the Year edition. 
Didn't you win a free Steam game as well oh, this week? Oh, yeah. I should talk about that real fast. Don't drop the name because we don't need more competition in this group in which we are all members that every Friday gives away a free game. That's how I got Persona 5. Oh, really? That's how I got Horizon Zero Dawn. Awesome. Well, I, yeah, he. Uh, so this guy was arranging it, like doing 20 questions, guess the game. I guess the game was Lifeline. And uh, he's like, okay, you can get anything under 15 bucks at the Steam sale. So I said, Doom. Hey. Nice. And uh, the game was Lifeline for the PS2. And I just thinking about it made me want to play it again. It took me a while to figure out how to play it because I don't have the correct Logitech headset you're supposed to use. The one that came with the karaoke game by Konami. But this game is basically a lot like Parasite Eve. It plays a lot like Parasite Eve, except instead of using the controller to select where to shoot, you tell the girl where to shoot, and you tell her where to walk, and you tell her what to look at. You'd be like, go look at the table. And she'll be like, okay. And you're like, uh, what's, look at that magazine. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, <laughs> look under the magazine. What? The magazine. Okay, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sort of like being the guy in the chair. Yeah, you are totally the guy in the chair. It's a really cool game. Like, Imagine Parasite Eve with voice controls that don't work very well, and uh, it's pretty fun. And it's really – it's a survival horror game, uh, but it's really fun. Uh, so I, I did a little let, uh, Let's Play of the first couple hours. It's on uh, the – my personal Johnny – what's it? No, the Kubert uh, YouTube. And it's also – I put on the, the Facebook page for Square Roots, smart, cool, very attractive people. Uh, Lifeline, check it out. It's a lot of fun and isn't available anywhere. Uh, Matthew, <laughs> how did you level up? I watched a TV show, and then because I liked it, I watched another TV show. So I decided to binge watch a lot of television this past weekend, and I watched Luke Cage Season 2. And it had lots of good punching, and cool music, and continued the Marvel Netflix show tradition of being pretty good, but not amazing. <laughs> but it was enough to get me to watch Jessica Jones season two, which had lots of good punching and cool characters and continue the Netflix tradition of pretty good, but not great. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. Uh, I'll just say before I pass the buck along. Hi, Jim. You made it. Hey, guys. I made it. How was your shower? Did you get Excellent. all that stankiness off you? Feeling good. Yeah. Looking good. Thanks. All right. Well, Jim, why don't you tell us how you leveled up, buddy? Um, I watched a movie called uh, The Endless. What is it? And it's a sci-fi horror movie. About the um, dreaming. It's about, it's by the same guys who made, uh, there's a horror movie that came out in 2013 called Resolution. Um, the same guys who made that. It's two guys named... Uh, uh, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. Death. And this is their third, uh, horror movie. Their first one was Resolution. The second one was like a body horror movie called Spring. This one is called The Endless. It's about two guys who escape like a death cult. And, uh, that's out in like the California desert. And then they want, they receive like a mysterious videotape about somebody who's in the cult. So they decide to get, you know, some, some closure and go out to the cult, revisit the cult, and it turns out there's a lot of crazy Lovecraftian things happening there, and they have to kind of figure it out and escape before it gets them. I thought that was the movie about death and dream and despair and desire and destruction and destiny. Nope. Did I forget any <laughs> of them? Did I get them all? No. Did yeah. I get all the D? Mm -hmm. I think I got them all. It's a good movie. It came out um, earlier this year in like a limited release, and it just hit uh, the streaming hit like uh, a uh, Amazon. So if you're into that kind of thing, Lovecraftian, weird sci-fi horror stuff, uh, it's a good movie. Well, I guess that's it for uh, leveling up, guys. We should probably move on to the next segment called the Quest Blog. Typing about my quest today. I'm gonna tell all my fans what I've been doing. Quest log. Quest log. Quest blog. Quest vlog. Thank you. 
So who's going to read the quest log? Shall it be me? It should be you, since I wrote it. Are you able to read a log about Fable? It's the quest log. Clear the table. We're going to need some cable for the quest hog. We're tying up a hog with our cable and twine. We'll cook it up with butter and baste it with brine. A delicious pig is what Did we'll you say eat. Baste it with brine. <laughs> Plan Fable is super <laughs> neat. It's the quest log. It's the final Fable episode. Yay! We we did it. All four of us did it. <laughs> I think it took me twenty hours total, which is a hundred hours less than it took me to finish Persona Three. So can't really complain. But uh, it sort of felt longer, didn't it? Yeah, a little bit, but it's fine. It I got through this game in a weekend. I mean, there's more than twenty hours in a weekend. That's not if you true. count. Not if you take out all the sleeping and drinking hours. That's a <laughs> lot of hours. It's I went out twelve Saturday hours a day for after sleeping. We recorded the prey episode for our Patreon. I went out and watched a football football game. And had many beers and shots. And then I went and got a cheesesteak and came home and ate it all and then took like a five hour nap. <laughs> and I woke up at like 7 p.m. on a Saturday and was like, what am I doing with my life? Hmm. I haven't been feeling great over the past couple of days and I realize I haven't had anything to drink this weekend. Maybe I should have one. I'm having a drink right now. I'm having a Strongbow apple cider. Oh, I think I have. Some blackberry cider in my refrigerator, so uh, bye, I'll be back later. I'm kind of a um, lightweight, I don't Big know deal. if you, you all know this, but I don't drink very much, so whenever I do drink, it's like quadruple what would happen to Matthew, for instance. Ooh, John's getting drunk. Yeah, I get flirty as a drunk. <laughs> uh, so, the first thing that happens is, uh, the moms told us about this super special sword we need to get. And we need to stop Jack from getting it, and he's going to the Hook Coast, so we need to go to this ancient Cullis Gate and reactivate it so that we can go to the Hook Coast. To get the Sword of Omens! Yeah! That's like the super epic sword, right? Yeah, and if you hold it up to your eye, it gets all cat eye, and then it grows long when you shake it. What? Thunder! Thunder! Is that- Thunder cats! Oh, is that what's going on? It's the Sword of Omens. Uh, is that from Thundercats? I don't know, John. You tell me. Does uh, this look like the sword from Thundercats? I don't. Ah! I don't know. Oh wait. Matt took his that dick is- out. Oh. <laughs> no, Matt, that's your penis. Please put it away. Uh, so it came off. we go to the Hook Coast, which is a a nice little coastal town. I, you know, I could see myself living there. Uh, if, if there was good job opportunity, I would totally live in the Hook Coast. It's sort of like Newfoundland. Uh, so, you know, it looks nice. Uh, what about any of you? Would you live in the sort the Hook Coast? I don't number the Hook Coast. What was there? Uh, that was the one that got filled with screamers and that was killing people, those screaming witchy ladies. It seems oh, yeah. cold. Yeah, I don't mind cold. Well, you're Canadian. That's true. Is this the one that had, like, the bell tower? Yes, the lighthouse. The lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Uh, so you get there. <laughs> a tall building. And there's a, <laughs> yeah. a a glowy force field on your way to get to the sword. And uh, the guild master uses his cell phone to call you and is like, well, that's weird. Uh, we need to find something, some kind of spell to turn that off. So if you, uh, we, we happen to know uh, the maze was researching uh, these kind of spells, so maybe we could go, like, loot through his books and find something. Where did Maze go? Yeah, why can't he just help us? I don't know. He wasn't there, was he? <laughs> <laughs> he was busy. He was out doing stuff. I mean, we, we do know what he was doing later, right? He was being a bad guy! Yep, like we all suspected. But, uh, yeah, so we go back, loot through his books, and find something on the art of thaumaturgy. What's a thaumaturgy? I thought it was thaumaturgy. Whatever. It's like a special name for magic. And, uh, he, so you find that, and, uh, then the guildmaster's gonna read that out to you. 
while uh, uh, you're there, and he will uh, disable the force field. And it works. Except when you go back, the whole town is full of screaming, floaty, ghosty things. And those things are cool, except, like, for everyone else, did you kill them with one hit? Uh, yeah. They were real easy to kill. They just kind of float around, and I guess they can damage you somehow, but they they, never seem to be damaging me. They shoot, like, these balls at you. These, like, glowy force balls that, if they hit you, will knock you down. Oh. But they die so fast that they never really have a chance. Uh, (laughs) So you go back up there, and... Uh, oh, look, uh, your old friend Maze, the one who's raised you since your dad got killed, uh, is there, and he, like, freezes you and apologizes for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, Aww. but then the sisters, like, harnesses the power of the Xbox to turn off the <laughs> force field, because <laughs> mm-hmm. your sister's also there, and, mm-hmm. uh, you find out that Maze is working for Jack, because originally Maze was going to try and fight Jack, but he, he realized he would never have the power to do it, and that he thought the hero wasn't powerful enough. So you... Mm-hmm. He's a real jackhead. He's real jacked in. You have a boss fight with Maze, and mm-hmm. uh, it's it's kind of a tricky one. I don't know, it was maybe the, it, one of the harder ones. You just kind of smack him around, and then he runs away a yeah, lot. that's true. He does a lot of running away. Yeah. Seems like he has some different forms, some that, like, shoot magic at you, and... It was right about now that I totally forgot to uh, buy health potions, so I was out, and that was a little tricky. Oh, no. But I still had healing magic, at least. And, uh, yeah, you kill Maze, and his last words are that he may actually, that you, the hero, may actually be powerful enough to kill Jack, so you should, like, totally go after him. Mm -hmm. So, now that you've beaten him, he's jacked off. Yeah, and Jack is <laughs> is finding all these like cement globy things. Yeah, we've been seeing these around the world the whole game. They're like giant cement balls. What does he call them? Oh, magic balls. <laughs> and uh they each time he activates one, it teleports into the next one. And you can follow uh follow through these gates after him. And so you go to the Witchwood and the same thing happens. There's just full of enemies, but it's also full of good guys that appear fighting with you because you've been helping out the people at Albion. So they're helping you out, which is, I like that. I think it could have been a more emotional moment if it weren't so janky. Is this like an apocalyptic scenario that we're talking about? Yeah. It's going to like blow up Albion. If he gets the sword, he will be like the demonic ruler. What does the sword have to do with the portals? He has to unlock the portals to, like... Get access to the sword? Or power it up or something? For some reason? Mm-hmm. Because only your but family has access he, to the sword. Doesn't he also need the blood of the that family? Yeah, because yeah, those got will that undo by. the portal. Because they're the it, descendants of Archon. Doesn't he, like, suck that... Didn't he suck that off of you? He sucks those balls. He sucks you off. He sucks that shit right out of you. Yeah, a- any any of them, either you or the mom or whatever. Oh, he also kills the mom, I think. Doesn't he kill the mom? He does. He kills the mom. No. It's right about, is it right about now or is it when you get the sword that he kills the mom? You get, when he gets the sword, he kills the mom, no. I think. No. So, uh, you teleport from the Witchwood to, uh, the Greatwood, and there was one more, I can't remember where the third one was. Uh, well, he gets all four of them, and then you go to the, uh, he's in the Chamber of Fate, which I guess is in the Guild. Was this an area you could go to before? I don't remember. I never went into it. Yeah, I never went in, but it's it's like, oh, was this here the whole time? Maybe it was locked. I went there. Well, it's what's in there? Got, uh, well, it's just a big empty room, but then it has murals of what you do all around the walls. Even before oh. you do it? No, after you do it. So if you oh, okay. show up there throughout the game, you can see those like murals that we see in the cutscenes. They're oh, there. That's pretty cool, actually. Mm-hmm. Eventually, yeah, you keep following him. You never catch him in time, and he's mocking you. Uh as you do it, but you get to the last one and he's unlocked that. So you go to the guild and he's there with your mom and your sister. And he, uh, decides 
to activate the sword, he needs to slice your mom's neck open. And he does. He super does it. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, you are all very upset, and then you start fighting him. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is it, the big final boss fight. Kind of. Did you run into thunder on your way there? I did not. Did you? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Because as you're, you know, racing around to go into these portals, yeah, there are um, other heroes who will pop up to help you, like Briar Rose pops up, and... uh, That's right. This is when I realized that Thunder was still alive, and I was like, what the fuck? I killed you, dude. Why is he helping you? I killed your sister, I killed you, and I stole your woman. (laughs) But he's still willing to help you? Yep. That's well, crazy. The universe or yeah. some stuff, I guess. Mm. I don't know. That's big of him. And he's a big guy. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so now you're in this room, and we enter our three-stage boss fight. Stage, Stage one. one. You, you can, can have, have lots, lots of, of fun. fun. <laughs> uh, so, stage one is... he's Is that the one where he's just floating around and you can... Hit. Yeah, he's behind the barrier. Oh, and you have to kill all the enemies to make all the barrier. The, aren't there more screamers here? Yeah. And all of yeah. his little minions and things like that. They're like, what's up, what's up, what's up? And you can kill them. And they, we, we had a discussion about it last time. They're definitely called minions, for sure. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, so whenever you actually get the shield down, then you can damage him. And step two is he's floating, and you have to, like, use magic or ranged weapons to hit him. Now, is that that he raises up, like, a circle of rocks, and he does this one attack that killed, well, it, like, used one of my resurrection files every time. It, I, I'm, I'm wondering, if you went back far behind those rocks, would you be invincible from it? Because mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out how to dodge that attack. Could any of you? Well, what I did is I stood underneath him and I spammed my inflame spell. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, that burnt him up real quick. But I think I recall the first time I played this hiding behind a rock and I had the bow where the longer you hold it down, the more it will power up. Right. So I just hid behind the rock for a very, very long time and then released the arrow and killed him. Oh, wow. I uh, I read in a fact that on the way to fight him, you there's like a bow laying on the ground, and that's supposedly a big hint as to how to easily kill him. Because he did, but there's this one attack where he's like hitting you from far away, and it's a physical attack that does twelve damage, but it's like super fast and will hit you until you die. And I think that it must be a way to dodge it. I just couldn't figure out how. I think you gotta hide behind a rock. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, the last one was. Uh, the last stage was the same. It's kind of a a mix of stage one and two. So he's floating around shooting at you, but also there's lots of minions and screamers and stuff. And you do that. Yeah, you got to fight all the monsters and then smack him in his head with your sword. Now, if you do that, uh, the game is won if you are playing the original Xbox release of it. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. the Lost Chapters, because that's where this game finishes. You, He dies... Your sister's like, okay, so here's a sword. Here's the thing. If you want that sword, you have to kill me to get it because it needs my power to fully unlock it. Or you could destroy the sword and I get to live. So I'd prefer option B. Mm -hmm. But she leaves it to you. Yeah, she's like, eh, you know, I get it. It's a cool sword. You would be more powerful than anyone else. And who doesn't want that? That was not Matthew, true. Matthew, how long did it take you to decide to murder your sister? <laughs> Zero <laughs> seconds. I did not hesitate at all. She had to die so that I could have that sweet magic sword that I equipped almost immediately. Almost immediately. <laughs> almost immediately. I unequipped it and switched back over to Sullis. So Sullis, the sword that you can buy at a store for 80,000 gold, is actually it, – it's more powerful than the one Jack's been, like – Trying for hundreds of years to get? Yes. I see that as a design flaw. Yeah. (laughs) But you have to understand that they harnessed the power of the Xbox. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Dot, dot, dot. 
question mark. I never had <laughs> 80,000 gold. Where do you guys get all this money? Uh, I got that after defeating Jack this time. I had enough to buy that sword. Well, plus I'm a good guy and the people at the store really liked me and I danced and sang for him. So ah. I got it down to 60,000 <laughs> gold. Nice. When I went to Bowerstone North after defe- after finishing the arena, I was like a thousand gold away from having enough. And I was like, I think that I'll go make a thousand gold and buy this $80,000 sword. <laughs> And, I and then would, I did, and then it was wonderful. I had a really h- nice house for rent in, in Not Whole Glade that gave me three thousand dollars every time I returned there. So I, it seemed like it would just refresh every time I went. So I'd go there, go somewhere else, and go back and get another three thousand gold. That sounds like watching a lot of loading screens. Yeah, this game has a lot of load times. Right before you get to the sword, there is. A load screen after you exit the guild, there's a bridge that takes about 10 seconds to walk across, and then another (laughs) load scene to get to that room. It's true. (laughs) (laughs) I I was just, ugh, ugh. Games need to not have... Totally unnecessary load screen. I I, I think games, like, a lot of more modern games now don't have them when, like... I don't know. I I, can't, I I hope next generation gets rid of gets rid of in game load scenes completely because they suck. Mm-hmm. God of War did a pretty good job with it. That game was almost seamless. Yeah, most of like Fallout Four. Unless, it, well, it did have him when he went inside buildings. That was annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but running around the whole world, you can. It sort of loads as it goes. I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's it's streaming off the hard drive as it goes, and uh, yeah, like Watch Dogs and stuff do that too. It's only like a couple of areas where Watch Dogs has to load. Anyway, uh, so we kill Jack, and I, of course, save the sister and blew up the sword, mm-hmm. and uh, then it goes to this like everything was good for about a year. The hero spent some time off, just hanging out, grieving for his mom. We didn't really know for the last 30 years of his life. Mm-hmm. And potentially grieving for his sister. Oh, that's true. Oh, he, if he killed her. And then you get a, a call on your codex from uh, the guildmaster saying, hey, uh, Jack's up to his old tricks again. I know you think he's dead, but he's kind of not. So but come see me at the guild. dead. Like, we for sure killed that guy. Nuh-uh. Well, that's dumb. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so now this is the lost chapter. It wasn't DLC. Actually, was it DLC or did you have to buy a new copy of the game to get this? Oh. I don't believe it was DLC. I believe you had to buy Fable the Lost Chapters or I, later I on the anniversary there edition. was DLC like Halo 2 had DLC at this point. Uh you could Really? Yeah. Like there were a couple of games that had DLC for the Xbox 1 or original. Uh, but I don't think, yeah, I think you had to buy this disc, which sucks because this is like three hours of content. Maybe. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the kicker is it's, it's, it's like a slightly redone version of the game with the lost chapter stuff. There's more to it than just this bit. There's a few extra side missions and some of the weapons and stuff, I guess. Some of the stuff that you could get earlier in the game, uh, that we played was part of the lost chapters DLC and just, DLC, the Lost Chapter stuff, and we just didn't notice it because it was, you know, seamless. Yeah, it's all integrated now. But, yeah, I agree. I, I would have been fucking hot pissed if I had played this game and then beat it, and they were like, here's a better version with extra content. I would have played it and been like, fuck you, you stealing ass motherfuckers. You see, the first time we thought we had harnessed the power of the Xbox, (laughs) that turns out that we had accidentally only harnessed the power of the GameCube. So we had to come back. Oh, no. And make a new and better fable. To really harness the power of the Xbox, Jack needed to be a dragon man. Oh, Mm -hmm. spoilers. So um, you also get like a hologram call from... Scythe, who is, I, I don't know if you remember me talking about him before. He looks like Valdo from uh, Soul, Ca- Soul Blade and Soul Calibur. Mm-hmm. And he shows up, which I guess is like one of the lost chapter editions that Matt was talking about. I saw him when I was a kid in the school, uh, in the guild school. Uh, he showed up in Maze's office one time saying he was going mm-hmm. off, going off to the northern wastes to go do some research. 
And this is what he was off doing, was uh, looking for a way to defeat Jack. And Bad so- timing, guy. <laughs> what <laughs> <Yeah>. the fuck? <laughs> he ended up not helping. Uh, but Jack is back. So you go to the <laughs> uh, Hook Coast again. But first, you need this thing called a Fire Orb, which sounds very Final Fantasy IV. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. So to get it, you have to uh, go to this demon door, which finally lets you in uh, right near the Bower Stone. And uh, you go there and there are these prophets encased in crystals that are kind of funny, kind of jerks. I like these guys. <laughs> this was very the Bard's Tale and I yeah, hated it. You're, you're right. This is I kind of enjoyed this part. They are just idiots. And they're sort of saying, hey, there's this puzzle. You need to do the puzzle to save us. If you turn all the tiles into suns, you'll save us. And if they turn to moons, you'll kill us. And it is the exact same puzzle from KOTOR. Mm-hmm. They want you to play a bullshit mini game, basically. Yes. And they, they, they oh, pretty gross. much specifically, they spell it out. They're like, just do this puzzle and save us. Mm-hmm. But you can kill them if you choose to, if you uh, do the opposite way of solving the puzzle. Uh, and it's also timed, and if you hit, don't do it in time, you start getting injured. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't have an opportunity to heal yet, so or buy those healing potions I was talking about before, because <laughs> I, I, I didn't think that it would go immediately into this crap. So nobody expects a bullshit mini game. Yeah, I saved them mm-hmm. all. It was a close call a couple of times. Uh, and yeah, uh, Matthew, did you kill them all for funsies? <laughs> sure did. <laughs> what happens when you kill them? Uh, they still give you what you want, and but then they also are like, <laughs> I knew this guy was a jerk. <laughs> but they're sort of dying one at a time, right? So I imagine after you kill the first couple, the other three start to get kind of nervous. Yeah, no, it's definitely like, come on, guy, come on. It's very Monty Python. Yeah, I didn't mind that, like... It was the best parts of the Bard's Tale, I think, were as good as this, which is, it's okay. It's pretty funny. Oh, ah. we're retconning John's no, opinion of the Bard's Tale. I, he loved it. That is not what I said. I said that the best parts of the Bard's Tale could make me chuckle, but uh, this is... No, it's Square Roots, it's square roots canon. Nope. Oh, John it's good nope. luck to be John. <laughs> John Brandon. He wishes the game Quotation. would go on and on. Bard's Tale. Oh, dot, he loves dot, to dot. play Bard's Tale. Best Bard's Tale. Great game. white whale. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna put that John on the re-release on the box. Loves my <laughs> tale, loves my tale. Best game, John Brandon. Doobity doo. Mm. So you get this fire orb, and uh, you bring it to the Hook Coast, which is full of these new enemies called Summoners, which look like kind of floaty pieces of armor with some magic goo inside. Cool. And uh. You have to kill them. Briar Rose is there, and she's like Lady Harry Potter, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. She got glasses. She showed up at the end of the game as well, though. She, remember, she uh, she helps you oh, figure does she out help what's you going with, on with, with the spinny those... orbs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's like she's got the round glasses. She's kind of got like I don't how she's got the Luca. She's very tomboyish haircut from yeah from Chrono Trigger. And the most important thing to note here is that she sucks and huh. she's annoying. Ah, oh, she's all right. She's like a researcher. Yeah, she's I like smart. Her. She's not. Sounds hot. Yeah. She hot. Uh, In a yeah. Luca kind of way. Yeah. Like, she's like a 25 mm-hmm. year old Luca. She lives on the second floor. She's going to turn on the red light. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, Briar Rose uh, helps you defeat these summoners, and uh, you have to go put the. This big light bulb on the top of the lighthouse. And I got an achievement called There's Always a Lighthouse, which is a reference to Bioshock Infinite. Spoiler. Mmm, you're right. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I There's get a couple it. Of, um, There's a couple of game reference uh, achievements I got here. But uh, yeah, so then uh, once you put in the bulb in the lighthouse, more summoners, wave after wave, come to try and break it. But once it fills up the the summon bar of the fire orb, you get a ghost ship starring ooh, Gabriel ooh, Byrne ooh, 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 ooh. and Juliana Margulies. <laughs> and also, and also, secret weapon actor Carl Urban. Oh, yeah. And secret 
Weapon X actor Logan. Oh, is Hugh Jackman in that? No. Oh. No. But that girl with the lips is Sucker Punch. But the Wolverine is in this game. Oh, she is. Huh? She's a little girl. Yeah, Sucker Punch is the little girl. Oh, she's Just the little girl. Her as the girl with the lips. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's her name then? If you know so much, I don't know because everything about that movie skeeves me out. <laughs> I really like Sucker Punch. What? I'm sorry. Okay, I'll what? tell you I'll tell you a true story of what happened to me. I was watching Sucker Punch and I was like, this whole movie is terrible. But I think the creepy racist guy with the pencil mustache is a secret hottie. And it turned out it was Oscar Isaac. And he was a secret hottie. <laughs> the end. <laughs> uh in my defense I may have worked on uh Sucker Punch. So That's not wow, a good John defense. made John made Sucker Punch. <laughs> yes, John Brandon Sucker Punch. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was really cool to work on, and I really liked how it came together, and I thought it was interesting. But yeah. it's also like you did a great gross. job. Like John, uh, John is the one who edited the movie, so he's responsible for the theme. Mm. Nope. nope. He, uh, John did the costume design, and uh, so he is. John also punched at the script. Yep. <laughs> John, what did baby dolls' dances look like? Please show us. Ooh, Here I've go. got into a trance. Yeah, watch this. Look at this. Oh, her name is Emily Browning. Yes. Oh. Yeah, she wrote all those poems in the uh, in the late 19th, early 20th century. That's right. And I think, she, is she the little girl who was in the series of Unfortunate Events movie with Jim Carrey? She is. Oh. She was She was also uh, uh, the guy's wife and all the flashbacks in American Gods. Oh. Oh. Emily Browning, American actress. Emily Browning, working actress. Yeah. <laughs> also got that guy who, who looks like David Carradine, but it's not David Carradine. Scott and, Oh, Bacula. that guy's great. It's not that Scott Bakula. That is not Scott Bakula. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Sucker Punch, get drunk, watch it. It's interesting, even if don't. it's bad. Do not Wait, listen to Wait, now I have him. to know what that guy's name is. It's uh, Scott Glenn. Oh, yeah. I yeah. like him. Listeners, I'm going to offer a counterpoint to what John just said. Don't do that. You will be offended. It is a <laughs> terrible movie. I strongly suggest that you watch Ghost Ship. So, uh, we were doing the quest. We get to... Oh, yeah. So, we go on the Ghost Ship starring Juliana Margolis and Gabriel Byrne. And it's a long journey. It doesn't say, like... I kind of want to know what it was like taking this trip. Were, was there food? Did yeah. he bring his own food? You have, like... You have a Were big, long, ghosts? stupid beard at the end. I, I always have the, that oh, beard, Oh, I hate anyways. that beard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just want to be like, okay, day three. There's ghosts on here, but they kind of suck and just want to talk about their boring lives. I don't know. Day four. I fucked a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> turns out Ghostbusters was right. Ghost blowies are the best. <laughs> I hate the term blowies. I don't know why everyone in BC uses it to oh, reference no. blowjobs. It's the gross. It sounds like something <laughs> your mom would say. Like, yeah. oh, I, got a, I gave him a nice blowy. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got off the ship, I was an old man with white hair and a long scraggly beard and giant horns. So I, I was Grandpa Evil. Hey there, sonny. I'm going to cut your dick off and feed it to you. <laughs> I got the white hair from jail, from being in jail. You can dye your hair in this game. How? I guess at the barber, probably. Oh man, I need to do that. So uh, you get to uh, the Northlands, and it's very snowy. It's like you're in a Skyrim. <laughs> yep, There's this a shitty, tiny Skyrim. There's this opening village that you get to... There's nothing really there, just a couple of chests. Uh, you walk up north to the town of Snowspire, which is a normal town with a property you can buy and everything. And uh, Scythe is there and he's like, hey, buddy. Uh, so I want to talk to this oracle. And this oracle is the, it's like a bunch of demon doors all clustered together. But we need glyphs to find out what each demon door's face is called. Although they only one talks. And... So you need to go to the Necropolis, which was this old town, uh, which got turned into a home of for the uh, home for the undead, a lot like Final Fantasy XII, that one Necropolis area. 
which does that now just full of undead. So you need to go there and you go there and, uh, basically there's tons of graves all through the city and you have to dig them up to find ones that have the good glyphs, which tell you the names of the people you need to talk to and not the bad glyphs, which summon more of these annoying undead enemies, including some summoners and ice trolls and stuff. Mm, I liked this town. It also has ghosts that don't know they're a ghost, but you know they're a ghost, so they weren't scary. Did they talk to you? No, they just walk around. It also had a bunch of ice trolls, and I hate them. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. They aren't so bad except if you get caught in their ice attack, and then it pushes you away from them over and over again. Yeah. That's really annoying. But if you stay close, it's fine. But if you get caught up in that ice attack, yeah. I found yeah. the slow time spell works for every enemy in this game, so use that. Because it basically yeah, makes the game Yeah, people that are playing easy. along at home. <laughs> I don't know, maybe some people are. I think everyone's starting Final Fantasy VI already, so... Mm, they're very excited. <laughs> I am too. Jim, are you very excited? I am very excited. No. Oh. So you uh, find these glyphs, you kill that ice troll to get the final glyph, and uh, get out of there. And uh, then you go back to Scythe, and he's like, okay, now we can talk to this guy. And the guy's like, uh, the Oracle is just the, that big, it's like a bunch of demon doors. And it's like, hello, oh, uh, yeah, you need to uh, open the bronze gate. You gotta get three souls to do so. <laughs> So all you need to do is go to the Archon Shrine, get them souls, and uh, bang Bob's your uncle. You go in there, kill Jack, you know. Uh, so there's that. But uh, you can also, now that you know the names of these uh, demon doors, you can talk to them, and they will each give you a little bit of history about Albion. Yeah. One will tell you about the animals and enemies one will tell you about people you know one will tell you about uh history what was it one will tell you about locations or something hmm i don't know i just i don't listened... know but it sounds way too late in the game for this shit to matter <laughs> yeah one of them recaps every episode of saved by the bell <laughs> <laughs> that's the best one <laughs> you may ask, how does Zach Morris freeze time? Does he have some kind <laughs> of magic power, or is he a wizard? And the answer is, he is a robot from the future who has uh, sufficiently advanced technology, and it looks like magic. Let's talk about the time that Zach dated Lisa Turtle for one episode, <laughs> and that it was never mentioned again. Remember when Zach Morris found that roach in the bathroom? <laughs> By roach, I mean marijuana, marijuana cigarette and not a cockroach, which would be a normal thing to find in a bathroom. <laughs> Remember when Zach co-opted Native American culture <laughs> and called himself Running Zach? Oh, boy. I always thought that Zack was a baby Deadpool. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say, Zack kind of sucks. <laughs> so uh, did, did any of you use this opportunity to learn about the fascinating backstory of Albion? Tori, where did she come from? Where did she go? Where did she get that leather jacket? What happened to Miss Bliss? Did she get fired? Was she having sexual intercourse with a student? Did they ever graduate college? Or did it only last two seasons? What happened to Dusted Diamond, and why is he such a weirdo in porn movies now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I learned about what happened to Whisper after I let her live, as all good and honorable people did. Uh, she was very embarrassed by her defeat, and so she returned to her homeland and made a good career as a hero there. Well, because on the way home, they were besieged by pirates. Yes. And she uh, killed all the pirates single-handedly and became a hero. Mm-hmm. And I also learned about Teresa. Oh, what did they say about her? Well, she was going... She decided to, to leave the uh, leave Albion and travel east to the far east lands 
on the way, she met this mage who was going to teach her magic spells, but she woke up in the middle of him doing a ceremony to steal her prophetic powers, and she murdered him oh. right away. And she got his, I think, magic cape or globe or something that let her teleport instantly to these Far East lands where she became a, a powerful enchantress. Yeah. And there's also the Guildmaster, who was friends with Maze and was part of... You know how we talk about how the Guild has evil quests? Uh-huh. Him, it was the Guildmaster and Maze and their group of friends who pressured the Guild and basically took it over to become not just goody-goody, but to take all quests and let people... Support people no matter what they wanted to do. Ah. Uh... So it was like a libertarian, like... Galt's Gulch thing. Oh, what a bad man. Well, I mean, you know, it depends on your perspective. Ugh. (laughs) Um, And yeah, I I learned a bit about Balverines, how they got, basically there was these things called Balvers, which were super bad and killed lots of people, but uh, eventually they bit a human and the first human who survived uh, the attack became the first Balverines. The Balverines killed all the ba- Balvers, but also kind of kill humans. So they're kind of not quite as bad as the Balvers, but not great either. Hmm. And that's uh, that's about. Oh, and I also got some history about demon doors, but uh, I, I just remember it being boring. They like riddles. I yeah. like riddles. Do <laughs> no, you? You like, you like Mick Griddles, Matt? No. <laughs> <laughs> So I like riddles. Like, what's in my pocket? That's a terrible riddle. What's in my pocket? Is it a capital one credit card? What's in my pocket? Is it McGriddle the thing that has like the fake pancake and the stirrup inside it? Yes. You know, I've never had one of those because it always seems it, it just seems gross, too right? gross. Yeah, I accidentally ate one. I thought it was a normal like egg McMuffin, but it wasn't, and I was so upset. Hey, Vanessa. <laughs> what? Number two. Oh, golly. Already my cheeks are getting a little red. Yeah, we're having a real party here. Well, That happens to me, too. I downed an entire bold rock raspberry. I'm sorry, blackberry. And it was delicious. <laughs> I'm drinking Fresca. <laughs> so you have to get three souls. Yeah. There's an easy way to do this, and there's a hard way to do this. I, l- I really like... See... This is what I talk about when games – remember from like 2006 through 2016, all games were all about their dumb morality systems? Yeah. And it was always backwards where you got more – it ended up being way easier to be good. This game's like, no, it should be way easier to be bad. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think that's good. Like, that is better design. I agree. So uh, basically, Briar Rose is there. She's at the Archon Shrine, and she's like, okay. She gets it one by one saying – this is the soul you need. So the first soul is uh, the champion of the arena. And uh, of course, that, me- that means Thunder, who was one, or, or you, the hero. Uh, there, but th- you, you go to the Knothole Glade and you see Thunder. And he's like, hey, uh, buddy, Like, I know I am a champion of the arena, but there's lots of souls in the arena you can also get. So you don't have to kill me. N- Matt, what did you do? I... I- I killed Thunder. <laughs> and I was very happy about it. Fuck Thunder. How many times do I got to kill you, Thunder? I killed your sister. <laughs> yeah, he's like a less likable one of the family, so. If you already killed the he sister. He was a jerk to you from the minute he showed up. I was fucking thrilled when I finally got to kill him. Now, if you don't kill Thunder, you have to go through, like, this 30-minute arena fight it was terrible yeah the only good thing about it is that jack of blades is like doing the 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 announcing yeah (laughs) and uh he announces the battle because he is hacked into your uh telepathy crystal somehow and uh while you are fighting people he starts saying like there's a new quest card for you at the <laughs> guild. <laughs> Your that. quest is to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh, right right when you accept this quest to go find the arena champion, uh, he's like he goes into your your little guild codex and it's like, hey, 
I'm not dead. That's right. Surprise. Although we all knew that, but he just starts harassing you mm-hmm. uh, throughout all these quests and it's pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's 30 minutes more of Coliseum fighting that gave me Kingdom Hearts flashbacks and I didn't like it. And uh, I eventually do it and you use the mask to suck up a soul from the arena and then you're done. Mm-hmm. So you go back to Briar Rose and the second soul Okay, I, I was in the bathroom for this cutscene. What exactly? <laughs> I know, like, the soul can either be your mom or Briar Rose, but what are the details? Like, what is what's the uh, 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 what qualifications? I think it's a a hero, basically, just like a true hero, or um, maybe it has to be a lady. Oh, the yeah. heroine. Yeah, I think she says the heroine. So she's okay. like, well, that could be your mom, or it could be me. So Matthew, did you needlessly kill Briar Rose? I did. Oh, what happened? She was very mad about it. Do you have to fight her? And she was all like, I knew that you sucked. And I was like, God fucking, what do I have to do in this game? I (laughs) killed my own sister. I killed my adopted sister. I have glowing red eyes and giant horns. I have sacrificed people to a goddamn torture demon. What does it take? Why do these people still like want to trust me and shit? Oh, and let's not forget the fact that you don't speak in this game. So all these people are, like, talking to you, and you're just, like, glaring at them. (laughs) Well, it's sort of like, suppose you had a choice between two, I don't know, political candidates. I knew it was going to go here. And you choose one (laughs) that maybe ends up enacting policies that aren't great for you, but you feel like you're already kind of all in with the idea of him being a great guy. So with this Fable character, they're like, well, this guy's a hero from the Heroes Guild. So uh, regardless of what he does, we're just kind of going to assume that he's going to start being heroic any moment now. (laughs) And he probably has a really good reason for not being heroic up until this point. He's playing seventh level chess or whatever Mm -hmm. it's called. Mm -hmm. Five dimensional chess. Is that what they say? Yes. So I killed Briar Rose, and she was all, meh. Do you have to, like, fight her? Yeah. Oh, okay. How was the boss fight there? All these fights are easy. Every fight in this game was easy. Once you get that sword, (laughs) (laughs) once you get that sword, the game is incredibly easy. The soulless sword, just just buy it. I went to get my mom. Me uh, too. Yeah, and she's there waiting. Speaking of, that seems more fucked up. It is kind of, but she's willing yeah. to do it. She's already dead, and she's like, hey, uh, I know what you're trying to do. It's a really good thing to do to stop this guy, so go ahead and take my soul. Only, whoops, here come some screamers. They don't want you to. And at this point, you have to kill about a thousand screamers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are tons. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of impressed with the amount of enemies on screen, actually. Because that, like, there were dozens at once. Yeah, it was a lot, and uh, I had to use a lot of healing because they did start to do damage to me. Oh, I thought you said they never hurt you. I was talking about last time. Oh, last time on Square Roots, Vanessa lied. <gasps> How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, after you kill them, your mom's like, "All right, yeah." I guess you can take my soul. It doesn't matter. I'm dead. Don't worry about your mother. No, she doesn't. She doesn't actually guilt trip you. That's my mother. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And my mother's lovely. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, uh... She's fine. Then you have to get the last soul, which is the oldest person. And I guess the oldest person that anyone can think of is the guild master, but it sure seems like there would be older people. I mean, this is like the middle ages. Life expectancy is pretty low. Now, when you say that, Jim, you mean average life expectancy, which means that most people, the average life is about, you know, 35 or 40 or something. But that includes tons of child mortality. People old, the oldest people in the middle ages are as, were as old as the oldest people now, which is a common misconception. Uh, you don't know that. Actually, I do. <laughs> like there were people who are a hundred. 2,000 years ago, and there are people who are 100 now, and it's it, it, that hasn't changed. It's the fact that more people don't die as babies that has changed. 
Well, those people, everyone back in those back in that time was really short. And according to uh, Randy Newman, short people have no reason to win. <laughs> yeah, I heard that song. <laughs> Screw that guy. Ugh. <laughs> He's not my enemy. I also love L.A., but you know. <laughs> ugh. <laughs> He really does have a song called that. Look it up. He really does. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the oldest person old. that Briar Rose <laughs> very short. can they think of is the, the guild master. I don't want Nostro. no short people. I don't want Nostro no short Nostro is people. older. So I if you don't want, want to kill the Guildmaster no because you're not a psychopath. Oh, yeah. The Guildmaster is a fucking great guy. He runs a thing called the Heroes Guild that, at least in my game, has produced at least two of the most horrifically evil people on the planet. <laughs> He's doing a good job. <laughs> uh, well, then why did you kill him, Matthew? Because it was easier. There's my heroes. One thing. It's a cycle, it's John. Busy. It's a cycle. Well, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, Matthew. Just because something's the easier way to do it doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. So I went and killed Nostro, and Nostro's like, yeah, yeah, fair cop, mate. You can go fight me. But first, uh, you got to fight my undead forces because, you know, that's just how it happens. And when you're walking to the circle, the undead circle uh, to kill uh, Nostro... Uh, I liked that the minions were there fighting with Stubby the undead. Stubby feet and the size two pants. All they do so that was fun. is a shuffle I like it, dance. I like it when AI enemies fight each other in games. No That's like my favorite thing. People. I don't want no Yikes. short people. So I killed I don't Nostro's no buddies and then killed Nostro me. and sucked up his soul. <laughs> and then used it back at the Archon Shrine to spit out his soul, and it powered up the shrine to open the Bronze Gate to get to the boss fight. And, uh, yeah, then Jack was like, oh, actually, what happens when you kill the Guildmaster? You fight him. Is he hard? Uh, it's kind of tough because he <laughs> mobs Is you he? with um, guards. Oh, and like okay. you can't hurt him, and he like he does that thing that video game bosses do sometimes, where he can like power up some of the guards around him, and then you can't do anything but like break that, and then you can find him. But once you take care of all the guards, then yeah, then you just kick the shit out of him. And it's not hard, but it's a little more time consuming. Okay. Like, can I can I bring this can Every I bring this conversation back a little bit? A was Vanessa singing the Billy you Corgan version of Short People? Because that's what it sounded like. <laughs> Going down to the diamond <laughs> the mine. The world is a vampire. <laughs> They're living with snow white. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't want words. no <laughs> short <laughs> people <laughs> around me. Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a cage. <laughs> Aw, rats. Now I feel bad about that rat again. I'm sorry. Aww. That's not nasally enough to be Billy Corgan. I don't think I can do that. Nobody can. <laughs> Nobody Tell should. me I'm the only one. Tell me there's no other tonight, one. Jesus was an only son. Tell me there's no other Anyway, the Guildmaster you. gets really mad and then you kill him. So then... <laughs> Final real boss fight for Fable Anniversary slash Fable The Lost Chapters. Jack is like, you fool, I arranged you to get all these souls because this makes me turn into the ultimate form, a big dragon. I'm a dragon, man. And I'm like, is this a plot? So I guess this is a plot twist that you were helping him by getting these souls, but... Whatever, man. It's fine. I think he was a dragon the whole time. He just squished himself up very small and put oh. on a mask, so he thought he was I a think man. That he's, so I think he like, Jack is the mask. What's a man? Like, I think Jack is what's in the mask, so, like, wherever the mask is is where Jack is. And, then like, once you get in there, you put the mask on the little dragon, and the dragon's like, nah, I'm Jack! And he, he hits you with his magic face what if you put your 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 his mask on your penis and then put the penis through the mouth hole and we're like hey jack look at you now you're my dick (laughs) (laughs) 
And then your dick starts talking, and he's like, ah, I'm Jack. <laughs> I'm Jack. I'll barf on I'm you. I'm not happy about this. This is very, very unprofessional. Please take the mask off your penis. <laughs> Please stop. I don't want to be your penis. I don't like it. No, don't put it in there. What are you doing? Stop doing the pelvic thrust expression. And uh, there's a final boss fight. I didn't like the last boss fight, but this one was fun. This one I thought was pretty fun. It was, he's a dragon, so sometimes he's like flying around shooting fire at the stage, but you can dodge it. He's summoning enemies and you can smashy smash his head and he's pretty weak. So especially with the, that ultimate sword of power, which is the one you buy from a store, uh, he went down pretty fast. Uh, then you can decide whether you want to put on his mask or throw it into the lava. All right, so here's where I fucked up, gang. It You can put Jack's mask on, and it's like, you'll be Jack now. And I was like, no, I don't want to be Jack. What the fuck are you talking about? And it doesn't even tell you, like, there's a prompt on the screen, and it's like, hit B to throw the mask away. And there is no, like, hit A to put the mask on, and B, finish this game in evil mode. So I just hit B. I was like, get out of here, mask. I'm not going to be Jack. <laughs> Fuck you. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And once you throw the mask away, the game ends, blah, blah, and you, like, walk out of the room, and... uh I suddenly, my horns were back to being teeny tiny little pinpricks on my head. And I like unlocked a bunch of like good side emotes and shit. And I was straight up like, fuck you, game. You suck. Oh, you got redeemed. That's so cute. I did the, see, I got all the bad side emotes, even though I threw the mask away, because I think it just unlocks everything when you finish the game. Yeah, but I definitely got a bunch of good well. points because my fucking horns went from being these giant rad horns to tiny little fucking micro pieces. Lady on Grey my head. is gonna laugh at you so hard when you go home. I know she's never gonna want to fuck me again. Mm mm. So I, I unlock the emote of giving people the middle finger, which honestly sounds pretty cool in a video game, and I wish more games had that option. Matthew, did you ever use giving people the middle finger? No. Aw, oh, man. Why not? I ain't got time so, for that like, shit. Anytime people would be like giving me a quest I don't like, I'd just be like, you know, like just giving them the double deuce or whatever, and making that sound every time I did it. <laughs> Guys, we did it. Did we do it? Are we done? Dude, yeah. We did it. I, I, I got a bullshit minigame corner. Do it. Uh, the bullshit minigame is that Snowspire has another tavern bar dude, but he's just wanting you to play coin golf again, which stinks. So John's screw that guy. bullshit minigame corner. He's officially repeating the games. And there was the, the one we talked about, the tile game, which is literally the same tile game from Knights of the Old Republic when you're in the Jedi Temple. If you re- remember that one. Mm-hmm. And also from Dragon Age Inquisition, which we haven't played for the podcast, but you do it in that game too. I'm only talking about games we played on the podcast, Vanessa. Well, I'm talking about a different game also from the publisher of Knights of the Old Republic. Well, you can't get screwed by Iron Bull in any of the games we've played so far. Uh, when can we play Dragon Age Origins? Seriously, Origins? Uh, it's it's available. It's 2009, so it's up next year. But I kind of want next year to be year of sequels. Although there's a lot of new, yeah. a lot of non sequel games I do want to play as well. So we'll we'll see what Matt thinks. I think it's a little early to be doing year of sequels when we have like 37 franchises we've yet to touch. Maybe 2020 mm. will be year of sequels. Yeah, because it's two twenties. Ooh, yeah. And two two. Okay, so next year, other than the one game, which uh, we're not going to mention, it will be all new games. Yay! Huh? 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 I don't know. Well, we'll just Yay. we'll just play what we want. I think that's you know. That's what we that's always what we do. Always yeah, what except is. for when the Patreons want us to do something. Yeah, well, they get to Scrally choose against. two games a year, and they already chose their two games this year. So we'll see about next year. Anyway, Matthew, my buddy, uh, wants to do squarely against. So let's uh, move on there. Okay. Matt, 
Matthew, what are you squarely against? Well, oh. guys, usually in the last episode, we like to take the opportunity to kind of give our thoughts on the game overall, and I'm going to be roundly for Fable. It was kind of dumb and broken, and it did not harness the power of the Xbox as well as it claimed <laughs> it was going to, but I had a fun time, and I finished it pretty quickly, and it had good, good combat where I accidentally murdered so many people. And it let me grow big legend style, Tim Curry and legend style horns, and that's fun. So that's it. That's me. Jim, what are you squarely against? Um, so, as is probably not surprising to our listeners, I did not complete the playthrough for this game this time, but I have played it before. Um, and I will say that this game is just fine. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's Fable. Uh, when we play Fable 2, I'll be a little more enthusiastic about it, but this game is just fine. It's, I, the world felt like really washed out to me. Um, a lot of browns. Um, but it's fine. John, what do you, how do you feel about it? I think Fable 2 is way better. Way. Oh, yeah. Way better. But I am roundly for Fable. In a way, because it was fun. Like the combat's fun. Uh, you know, it was it had some moments that genuinely made me laugh, especially giving inappropriate school books to the kids. But also, uh, the game doesn't some has some very weird stuff about women, which is you know part of British humor. That is a weird part of British humor about how much they don't like ladies sometimes. And uh, yeah, yeah, thank God that nobody else does that. No, but there's like this definite like super hardcore women are awful thing to british mm-hmm. humor <laughs> that is uh uh you know it's 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 uh centuries old but uh overall this game is fine yeah i think jim has the right attitude like it's it's fine it's it's fun enough i didn't i didn't get angry at it the way i got angry at grandia for sure <laughs> or fantasy star 4 <laughs> like i never got really really frustrated and uh that's good I think. And I think the anniversary version is pretty and kind of impressive for what it does with the Xbox. But I also think this game has terrible facial models. And the fact that all the hero does is gape and look like like really bad 80s CG is, is a problem. But uh, otherwise, the game's it's all right. It's pretty good. I think the facial models in this game are a really good example of terrifying body horror. Yes. Yes. Especially when the eyes disappear for no reason. Yeah. Also, this game kind of <laughs> crashed a lot. Vanessa, uh, what are you roundly for or squarely against? Did you like this game? Hey! Yay! That's my man! <laughs> oh, oh that yeah! Is. Yay! Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good review. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Uh, we got an email, and I think it's time for Jim Banks to read it. Oh my gosh, do I have to read the email? Yeah. Okay. It says, Hi, Cass fam. I have a dilemma, and figured between Matt's grumpiness, Jim's mm. positivity, John's common sense, and Vanessa <laughs> being Vanessa, you'd be the ones to I'm ask. Vanessa. John's common sense. I was recently driving behind a car that was going really slowly on the highway. If that's not bad enough, he had a vanity license plate. And if that's not bad enough, the plate was foodie. Oh, shit, this guy was behind (laughs) me on the highway. (laughs) My instinct was to run him off the road, but then I noticed a baby on board decal, and I decided the sins of the father weren't those of the child, so I didn't run him off the road. In retrospect, that's still an awful license plate. Did I make the right decision in the end? Thanks, Please don't run me off the road. P.S. What is your favorite Bard's Tale game? Mine is the first one. The game's incisive insight on women being gold diggers was excellent. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, I think, James, that you saw uh, Queen of Quinn's car. Uh, Queen of Quinn being the protagonist of Final Fantasy IX. Uh, uh, Yes. (laughs) Who believes that the world is made of only two things. Things you can eat and things you cannot eat. And uh, I'm glad that you did not run her and or him. Uh, however, Queen to Queen decides to identify that day. It was not consistent in the game, I don't believe. Um, off the road, because Queen to Queen is great. And I love it. Uh, my favorite Bard's Tale game, I guess I've only played the one, but I've heard that like one from the 80s or 90s was okay. So I'm going to go with that one that I haven't played. 
as my you favorite heard it here Bard's first. Tale game. Vanessa's favorite Bard's Tale game is the game that she played. It's her favorite game. Uh, now, one time I was in the, uh, I, I was driving. I actually, I don't think James was in the car. I was driving James's friend's home because I was playing D and D with James, the letter writer. And I was driving my Mustang, and that was like I was twenty five, so I was kind of like roaring the revving the engine and stuff. And this lady was like, she dropped whatever she was doing on the side of the road and started swinging her arms to tell me to slow down. But it looked like she was saying "pump it up." Uh, so we all laughed at her, and then like revved the engine even more. I was kind of a jerk driving a Mustang back then. Anyway, uh, don't drive people off the road, James. You are a grown man with a wife, and that would be bad. And also, uh, Bard's Tale 3 looked super cool back in, like, 1989 when it came out, because I was reading the reviews of it in video game magazines, because I was that kind of kid. And uh, I never got to play it, but that would be instantly better than whatever the crap was we played. It looked like a more serious, interesting RPG. But who knows? Jim. Mm -hmm. Help, James. I would not run this person off the road. I'm generally against um, vehicular manslaughter and reckless driving. So I'd say don't. Don't do that. But I'd be okay with you, like, giving them the finger. (laughs) Uh, I think that's a pretty good compromise. And you can – and plus, maybe the kid will see it, too. The baby on board will see your finger and know your rage. Um, As far as Bard's Tale games, I'd – I don't have a favorite one. I think that's okay. Matthew, help James. What? It's late, man. Are we still doing this podcast? Holy shit. We're almost done. I need to pee, so let's wrap this thing up. I'm Vanessa. What do you think, Vanessa? What do I think about what? The- Road rage? Yeah. Well, no, you shouldn't do it. Uh, Everyone knows that I don't like cars. Uh, I especially don't like them when people use them as weapons of destruction. Uh, Or drive distracted. Don't text and drive. If you're listening to this podcast and the podcast ends and it doesn't like autoplay the next episode or it goes to some episode you don't want to listen to, just let it play out until you're in a safe place where you can switch your uh, phone without uh, having to keep one eye on the road and one eye on your telephone. Everyone thinks that they're the one who can drive with the phone and not have any problems, but you're not the one. No one is the one. Everyone should pull over to the side of the road, put on your hazard lights, and then switch your podcast cast can i go now i'm tired (laughs) yeah i think that's it for tonight um so everyone that's it for fable stay tuned uh next episode when we start our final fantasy 6 series oh yeah i believe we'll be playing until we get to the returners base yes that is correct you don't know you're just saying that i am saying that i'm just agreeing with you (laughs) well vanessa is very smart and I don't mean that in a patronizing way. I just mean <laughs> no, she's very smart. I know you don't. I'm very smart and I'm very educated. Yes. I'm not. I had to drop out. Anyway. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, uh, let's go ahead and do our sign offs. Um, I think everybody knows what our email address is, what our email address is now, but I'll go ahead and tell them again anyway. It's squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. Um, you don't have to email us just about video games as, uh, James Vincent Plett just demonstrated. Um, we want to hear from you, whatever it is. So send us an email. You can also reach us at our Facebook group, which is the Square Roots Podcast group for smart, cool, very attractive people, or you can tweet at us. We are at Square Roots Pod. Our intro music for this series is the one Nils's cover of the Oakvale theme. Our outro is Metal Lewis's cover of the Fable Anniversary theme. Check out the one Nils and Metal Lewis on Patreon and YouTube. Links in the show notes. Matt, gotta work on some Final Fantasy VI music. Matt's playing a game on his phone. Oh. Is it called Look at Porn on Tumblr? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that game's great. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you screenshot re- your review and post it to the Facebook group or Twitter, John will tell you how you leveled up. Yay! Thanks, Vanessa. Uh, I think we'll skip reading the names of the Patreons this time because we're all we very can't sleepy. Do that. And Patreons, I hope you understand. No, nope, we're going right. to do it. All right, go. Do it, Matt.
Sam Harrison, Devin Sloan, Danny Lucas, Cody Schwerin, James Plett, Greg Bailey, Race Jenkins, Joseph A. Rogers, Rob Schubert, Stu Skeel, Xavier Krieger, David Shook, Matthew Jorgensen, Kiva, Mosser, Samu Mitchell, Andrew Wayant, Brian Stone, Andrew Bachman, Robert Polum, Stan. Oh, that's Aaron Bachman. Aaron Bachman. Andrew Bachman, Robert M. Polum, Stan, <laughs> Tracy Danoff, Josh Anderson, Robert T. I lost my place. Where's my place? Ross Hartley, Tyler Petty, Brody Toy, Justin Ham, Bree Girth, Meredith Anderson, Brian Pitt, Ward Childress, Patrick Hoover, Patrick W. Bears, Wonder Swan, Miguel Torres, Resty Kamada, Tom, Lynn Setchell, Justin Benoit, My Mom, Cameron Show, and Cyril the Wolf. The Wolf! Oh. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, for Square Roots, I am Jim Banks. I am probably Jim Banks, too. At this point, I don't know anymore. Not me. I'm John. Hi. I'm a little bit like Jim, but not as tall mm-hmm. and much younger. N- n- no. I'm Vanessa. Bye. 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 Matthew's in sleepy mode. No. Mm, Oh, he's a busy bear. Uh, Then you can decide whether you want to put on his mask or throw it into the lava. I see. Um, Oh. I. I threw it away. And Matt is a. When John says he's in sleepy mode, I want to make it really clear to the listener. He is actually asleep at the microphone. I think he was oh, looking at his phone. Up. I don't think he was asleep. <laughs> he was looking at his no, phone. No. <laughs> All right, so here's where I fucked up, gang. I. It doesn't. Okay.